How's it going, everybody? So I'm super pumped about this episode. I'm also very excited to get to introduce you to the sawmill where I'm buying my lumber. They cut some beautiful, large uh, Texas native slabs. Very well done, kiln-dried, uh, stable material. Uh, it's a super cool operation. I think you guys are really going to enjoy seeing it, so let's go check it out. Johnny, you ready to go to the sawmill? Daddy. Junie, Junie, are you excited to go to the sawmill? No. No? The sawmill's so fun. You wanna go to Chick-fil-A? Okay, we'll, we'll go to Chick-fil-A first. Right, guys so I'm at Berdal sawmill this is probably the coolest place to shop for lumber you can check all these giant slabs out right now they're working on this super sweet what is this a conference table or really cool conference table out of Texas pecan how long is this 20 feet 20 feet long most of the wood that Brandon cuts is what y'all cut pecan mesquite some walnut yep native Texas hardwood all native Texas hardwood so this is a really cool place. I would highly recommend you guys go check it out. I'm going to put a link in the description of this video for you guys so you can go to their website and see uh, some of their inventory and what they do. It's not bad, man. So you get like a 40 grit or a 60 grit on there, you can go pretty quick. You just do 80. 80, yeah. Homemade orbital sander. So what you see here is Brandon is using a mallet to tap the log and he's listening for uh, what I would call voids or uh, rotten spots in the log where the wood's no good. And, and I think they've kind of run into a spot here where they're going to actually flip the log over and start cutting from the other side. So you're seeing that happen now, um, and what they'll do is they'll take a really, after they flip the log, they'll take a really thin cut off the top to level it back out, and then from there they'll start dropping down in whatever thickness they're cutting, which is probably two and a half, two and a quarter, um, and take their slabs off of the log that way. Oh, yeah. This is false. Right, yeah. So right now, you know, some woodworkers like this false wood, yep. and it gets too, too far gone and it's flat out rotted, but there's like a... Right, there's, there's a, a fine of, line, there's yeah. There's a fine line. Yeah. And so what we do, when it comes off the, comes off the mill, we get the coat of boric here, which treats it for uh, potential insect infestation, and but also in the fungus. fungus. yeah. And so... So you, each slab gets boric hair put on it. Every, yeah. Yeah, yeah, everything that comes off the mill, we do we keep for air drying and kiln drying, it gets more air. Wow, that's cool. And uh, it's beautiful. Now, Brandon has a new uh, species of wood here. This is actually metallic wood. I don't know if you've ever seen anything like this, but um, it's pretty special stuff. I'm pretty excited to get some of this from him. Look, it has red sapwood in it. It's pretty crazy. I'm just kidding, that's not really metallic. That's just paint to seal the end so it doesn't crack. It's awesome. All right, so it was a pretty long day today. We just got home from the sawmill. Um, I'm unloading lumber now. Here's my stash. Um, so we got door styles. These are actually two book match boards. Here's one of them. Where's the other one? I already got it out of the truck. So I'm going to finish unloading this. Um, call it a day. It's been a long day. And tomorrow we will start laying out parts for this barn door. So before I get into making the barn door, I have to give you guys a really quick sneak peek of the bandsaw because I know y'all are being patient on that. It's taken a little while to get it all finished, but the next video, which will hopefully be in a couple weeks or even less, will be the finished video of the bandsaw with it running. It's almost done. All I have left to do is get power to the motor get a flat belt to drive it and put a blade on it which uh, is, is on order and will be here soon. So I'm going to give you a quick look. There it is and that's all you get. We got to be patient and wait. 
It won't be long, and this thing will be up and running. You'll be seeing me building furniture with this. Before I go, though, I want to use the opportunity to ask a quick question. I always like reaching out to you guys for help because a lot of you guys who watch this know way more about it than I do. I have the oil here in this oil bath where there's two bearings in here, and it, as you can tell, it's leaking pretty good right there. So, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with that. This little cap here doesn't have a really precise fit and that's why it's leaking. Anybody who has any thoughts or suggestions on how I could deal with that oil leak, I greatly appreciate it. And guys, be patient real soon. That saw is going to be up and running and I'm going to show you guys everything I've done to it in the last month that I've been working on it. So what we're doing here is we're kind of, I'm, I'm working with Ryan, to, we're trying to figure out how we want to lay out the styles. We've got two book match boards for the styles, which is a really cool, unique feature. Um, but they've got a lot of cracks in them and we've got to get, uh, I think five inches on our style width. So we're trying to, to cut out some cracks and have enough left over to get the five inches. Um, it's always tricky with mesquite because there's always cracks and voids in it. So when we mill the styles, first we'll straight line one edge uh, using the track saw, the Festal track saw, and then as you can see, we're coming back and uh, just using that straight line as a reference and ripping them off on the table saw. It works pretty well. Now we've glued up all the frame parts of the door, the two styles, the top rail, the mid rail, and the bottom rail. And the great thing about the sander is that we can calibrate our parts with it, everything to the exact same thickness. And that's what we're doing here, is we're running all the parts through, all the way through to 120 grit, um, and calibrating them all at the same thickness. Now, I could do this after I glued up the door, but with this particular door, it's it's wider than my wide belt. My wide belt will sand 43 inches in width and the door is 50. So everything has to be sand, uh, sanded prior to glue up, um, which gets a, gets a good sanded surface, clears off all the epoxy and calibrates the parcels to the same thickness. So one of the challenges with working with mesquite is you get a lot of cracks and Ryan and I have filled a lot of these with epoxy. We had a really bad, and this is the door style right here. It's eight foot long. We had a really bad crack at the base. So you can kind of see it up close. I'll let Ryan push on a little bit, and you might be able to hear it. Yeah, I mean it's right here. It's hard to push, yeah, but right here it's there's it's just kind of it's coming apart, and you can hear a little cracking happening. And if we let's flip this over, you can kind of chase these cracks all the way through to the other side of the board. Since it's the door style, it has a lot of it can have a lot of force on it. And, we need something to reinforce it. So we're just going to put that piece in and hopefully hopefully that solves the problem. So we use floating tenons, but we machine them all with a plunge router. Uh, we had to lay out uh, just stop marks on all of our styles and rails, and then it's just a matter of plunging down with a half inch spiral up, up cut bit and cutting out all the holes. And then what we do is we mill our uh, tenon blanks, our floating tenons, um, separately and just glue it all together. That reinforces the joint, makes it a lot stronger. So after we cut the uh, joinery, we always run all of our grooves for the panel on the with the dado blade on the table saw. It's super easy, um, pretty quick, and pretty fairly accurate. So that's kind of what Ryan's doing here. The really long pieces, I'll help him feed those through because it's just hard to keep them down on the table uh, without a huge outfeed table supporting the piece.
store, I'm not doing a solid wood panel. It's such a giant uh, span um, that it makes more sense to just use tongue and groove. Um, I like the look better too. We're doing a little tiny little penny gap at each board. So um, one thing, the one advantage of the tongue and groove is you don't have wood movement across the whole panel. So it reduces um, your movement because it's happening in so many little spots. Each board is moving individually on its own. It keeps things uh, flat. It keeps things from cracking and falling apart. I, I always like tongue and groove paneling for door. Um, sometimes people just don't like the look, so you have to go solid. But um, <clears throat> that's what we're using here on this door. And what we're doing here is we're sanding. We're using the sander to thickness uh, each um, panel to fit into our groove. So we, pre we cut the grooves first, then we come back and we fit our panel into the groove so we get a perfect fit. All right, so this is the panel. This is a tongue and groove. Now we're gonna lay these out on the ground and if Ryan got his numbers right, the width of these, 10 of these put together <laughs> let's see, let's see. The width of the 10 of these put together should be the width of the panel we need to fit in our rails. So let's give it a shot and see if he got it. So as you can tell, we got our panel all laid out. The width was good. Ryan did a really good job figuring his numbers on that. It, it can be real difficult with tongue and groove. I, I, we almost have to lay it out full scale to get each board sized right with your tongues and then your gap. Because the really the important part of this door is to make sure that de that gap is the exact same across all boards. So once we have that all figured out and we know we're good, we can go ahead and glue the door up. So once the door is glued up, uh, we take it out of the clamps, cut it to size, uh, sand it all, um, and then finish. Uh, those are really the last steps. Um, and on the finish, I'm just spraying clear lacquer. There's really no reason, I, I believe, to stay mesquite. It's a beautiful wood, and when you put finish on it, there's so many things that pop in the grain. It looks awesome. It looks really cool. Um, so it, this door turned out great. The finish looks great. Um, so once we get it finished, then it's just a matter of going to hang it. For this project, I uh, teamed up with Artisan Hardware. They sent me the track hardware for this door. Um, really, I've used Artisan Hardware for a lot of my barn doors in the past. Right here, I'm checking it out, making sure all my hardware is good. I actually ordered this um, not pre-drilled when I should have ordered it pre-drilled because I later found out that the builder did block out the, the jam and the header and everything. So. I had to come back and just drill, space the holes and drill them myself, no big deal. So once we got the hardware all lined up and ready, we loaded everything up and we're headed to the house to do the install. And the fine is done.
Okay, so as you can tell, we got the door uh, all installed. Everything looks great. Came out looking really good. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little bit from the process. I have some very exciting projects coming up that we are going to capture in these episodes. The next one will hopefully be um, the bandsaw, which we spoke about a little bit earlier. A little sneak peek here at a table for um, Matt Carricker for his new merch company. This is a conference table. That video will be that is getting filmed and will be a video coming your way soon. We also have a custom ping pong table that is in the works. I have the lumber on the racks for that. We'll be building that soon. Uh, that's going to be a fun one. So you guys stick with me. Keep tuning in. Um, you're going to keep getting the silent videos from me, and you're going to keep getting these behind the scenes. That's kind of where I'm at now. I hope you guys are enjoying it. If you have any suggestions or comments or anything you want to see, please let me know. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time.